Hey, I'm Max. And I'm Josh. We're from Yumi at Six. And we're here to tell you behind our songs. Behind our songs? What is behind Stuff our songs? about behind our songs. What is, what about, what is behind those songs? There's know. a story behind story our songs. Story behind the songs. There you go, that's what it's called. <laughs> Fresh Start Fever is a very interesting case. Okay, so <laughs> basically, we were writing in Henley on Thames, this place called the Doghouse. And one night, I was just so, I was just so frustrated, like constantly being in this place writing. I was like, I'm going out. I'm going out to Reading. Who wants to come out of me? And Matt and Dan joined. Matt and Dan went out of me, and I was like, All right, you guys had a nice chilled evening. And we came back, and Max and Chris had written this song. And it was like, as soon as I heard that song, I was like, all right, we're good now. Because it was like, with every record, there's, we kind of alluded to that on Swear a little bit. Maybe there's up more songs that are kind of more imperative to us getting that feeling. But with Cavalier Youth, we'd obviously just come off the, the Wembley Arena high with the Final Night of Sin, and was definitely a high, but then also this feeling of... Pressure. Pressure, like if we want that and more of that, we have to deliver something decent. And we were just writing just some absolute shit, like really shit songs. And we were like, we've got 10 days left to write this record, or at least as much of it as we can. We had some yeah. songs, this may be a bit unfair, we didn't, they weren't all shit, but we had some songs in the locker, but then we went through this very, very dry spell. And yeah, came back and Max was like, oh, we've been writing this, it's like three in the morning. Oh, we were all pissed up, they weren't, I don't think, but. Maybe other things in there, but we don't yeah. say that, so. But yeah, you, you, were, you were writing this tune, and I was like, as soon as I heard, as soon as I heard the uh, the pre-chorus, I think that was the bit that I was like, okay, that's the bit of the song that yeah it takes it up again, yeah. yeah. And then obviously you got is it you or you know Chris plays the lead in the chorus. Chris plays the lead lick. Yeah, when course. I heard that lick, I was like, okay, this is a good song. I think that's like one of Chris's specialities, is like without him even realising it, he just can throw something to Kevin very quickly and rough back. Yeah, he makes what, it really easy. He makes it's it look really very annoying. Yeah, he makes really it look simple annoying. and beautiful but annoying at the same time. And it's just like sometimes it's the easiest thing, but it's just mm. the way he plays it that makes it his character it's like Chris's characteristic sound. Like you hear it on you'll hear it on a trademark bunch of Yumi A Six songs like from the underdog chorus to like you're saying Fresh Dark Fever to I know like, you like, Yeah, but like there's there are songs that Chris does and you're like, oh God, where's that come from? Out of nowhere, you know, and just, he throws in a few sneaky bits here, there and everywhere, like, where you don't realise it. Just characteristical sound, the bear. But yeah, that was um, Under Pressure would be that song. Under Pressure of knowing that you've got to come back from what Josh said on a Wembley show and actually why I think pressure's good. I think being under the pressure really helps you to get the best out of you sometimes. And maybe that's why night people took so long, because there was yeah. no pressure. No one was pressurising us to do anything. That's just like, let's just take our time with it. If we go in and have a month where we don't write a single song, that's fine. But in reality now, we're already in a position where we've written probably about, well, I'm not, I can't really say, put a number on it, but we've, we're writing songs. There's, I yeah, there's, there's ideas, ideas isn't there? That, that feel good already. So we're just constantly keeping the train going now, rather than, when I think in an ideal world we'll have maybe even new music out this year, if not next year. So that's us putting pressure on ourselves. But it's good, like you said, it's good. It's good pressure. Yeah. It's good to have that sometimes. That was actually, I guess, it's something we've never had before, where we actually had this very bizarre, not bizarre. Well, yeah, it was a bizarre meeting with the people from Fort Park, and they were like, "We've got this ride." Um, and, it, and we went down and looked at like the uh, the making the ride and we were like, oh, what's it all about? And they're like, oh, it's the end of the world. And, you know, so we're kind of wanting a song that would fit that brief. And we've never written for anybody else or for anything like that before. And um, yeah, it was wild because I think y you came up with the verse stuff. Yeah, we sat down. I, I remember being at your, I was around Josh's house and we just kind of said, let's take a day just to kind of sit with a guitar and just build on the idea and like obviously when you're given a brief like that it was almost like a story and the key words were the end of the world so I think for us that was like well that's the marker in the chorus that should be 
that says everything that they want us to do. So, so write a song about the world ending yeah, and make so, it sound moody. So we worked around that and just kind of basically made a moody song. And um, it was a very interesting period. That was the first time a publisher approached us to do anything like that and brought in this opportunity to do something which was cool. I think Loverboy was one of those songs that really kind of led on from Stay With Me and Underdog and that was the, the next first connecting song. That came, song. came out of Sinners and it was the first single. It was Matt's first ever idea that Matt wrote on bass. So that was an exciting time because obviously before that it was always Josh, myself and Chris coming up with ideas. So when Matt came up with this idea, we were just sitting, well, where, have you, where have you been keeping that head? Yeah. Well, I, if you remember, I, I really liked it because I was going, oh, I can imagine, like, because obviously I go to the football, we both, Matt, well, a few of us are massive football fans within the band, and I just thought, I remember whenever they play White Stripes, Seven Nation Army at a football ground, you get everyone chanting, and I was like, oh, I can imagine people would, like, sing, like, a da 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 like, chanting along to it, and they were like, Ooh, we should put that on the actual song, that would yeah. be different. It was a mixture of that and it was when, because um, obviously we did the record with Garth Richardson who did a lot of the Biffy stuff and it was just after Garth recorded Only Revolutions and you're hearing the, the foot stomps at the start of the captain and we are like, let's incorporate all this kind of like laddie kind of like foot stomp, just real just get behind the song motion to it and yeah, it was a very, there wasn't like again another song that really didn't take long to create, which I think like, is all of our best songs have literally taken like between half an hour and two hours to write, start to finish. Yeah, and that's when you know a song's good. And you know, just one of those songs I, I don't think I'd get bored of playing that song. No, it's it's, too, there's too much fun stuff going on in yeah. there when you're playing it. Yeah, and there's like bits where like it has a good dynamic where you're not always playing all the time. Like I, I don't play the second verse like. The spits coming in and out. Again, what we were saying earlier is a Chris Miller trademark guitar. But like, so simple, but again, it just, it does the job without having to overthink things. Mm. The melody, straight away. I think it was the first time you meet Six had a guitar solo in a song. Mine is Take, uh, no, what was it? I'm Take Off Colors, there was a fire in your shoes. So the second solo of you meet Six's catalog. Um, what would you say inspired you lyrically for being, that song? Being a player. Love a boy. Being an absolute player and leaving a path of destruction and broken hearts in my, in, behind me. I think that was, it was around the time I wasn't we, a very good player, by the way. I was a pretty poor player. It was, <laughs> didn't, didn't do too well for myself or anybody else. Were you doing a John Walters on a Monday night down at Rainy Stoke? John Waters. <laughs> yeah, John Waters. I don't know. Just made him up. He's just a new Stoke player. Who cares? <laughs> no, I think I, I there was definitely in our earlier music there was a lot of like <clears throat> angst, I guess, on my side because I never tried to like write nasty songs about girls, but girls just kept on doing nasty shit, so I put them in songs. Um, and that's why a lot of our earlier reviews were like, "All this guy writes about his boy girl stuff." I was like. Shit, I'm like 19 in the band. I think the Yumi at Six kind of stood a bit taller than some of the other bands that were coming through at the same time because we were writing songs that we weren't trying to be like anybody that we weren't. And I think that when you're a young band writing about shit that's happening to you and you, without even trying to be like, oh, what's relevant or what's cool or whatever, you literally just write about what's happening to you in that exact moment, it's gonna be, happening up and down the country and all over the world to other people your age. And I think that's why for, at least for, I don't know, right up until probably just after Sin is our fan base. And still, we still obviously have young fans as well as older fans, but um, I think there was a demographic between like 14 and 20, which really just, like they felt like we were singing their anthems, <clears throat> like we were singing for them. Which I always used to, that's why I've always loved spending a lot of time with our fans and listening to them about <clears throat> what they like about our songs, whether it's the music or the message or whatever. And it always goes back to the fact that they say, I felt like you wrote that song with me in mind, which obviously didn't, but it's amazing that people can inhabit your music in that way. It's the power of music, isn't it? Yeah, really, that's the best part about it. it.